Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this special request RPG Maker AMV tutorial, I'm going to go back to the basics. We are going to teach you the fundamentals on how to create a quest in RPG Maker MV. This is a simple skill that a lot of people who have used past engines understand. We're going to be covering basic switch operation and basic variable manipulation. So this is a special request for main girl 93416 and she actually requested this several weeks ago. Sorry about the delay. Lots of stuff going on, but I told you I'd get to it and here it is. So instead of pre-making this quest, I thought it would be more helpful for you guys to see me making it in real time so let's drag this over let's get right into it so you've got a new game open and you've got a couple maps maybe but you want to start uh, developing a storyline but you don't know where to start so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a quick little paint the map fill this with some uh, some grass here and uh, something like that and uh, basically we're gonna set up a new NPC this is gonna be our quest giver so let's find somebody who looks like a decent quest giver um, I think maybe like an elderly man or something obviously it doesn't matter what your quest giver looks like it could be this matter of fact we're gonna go with this horse because yeah so here's our quest giver this quest giver is gonna say hello Welcome to the village. If you have some time, I could use a little help. So you're going to have a basic storyline in here. Obviously, your storyline is going to be a lot better than mine. Uh, but this is just going to show you the mechanics on how to do it. Okay, so at the beginning, we're going to have our opening text, right? And we're going to cover how to use pages. Pages are very important tools when you're developing quests. Um, so when we talk to the NPC for the first time, it's going to give us our basic intro dialogue. What we're going to do then is we're going to do a self switch. So we're going to control the self switch and turn on self switch A. This is going to go us, uh, let us turn to the next page. So we're going to copy this event page and we're going to paste it. So now we have two pages. On the second page, we're going to select self switch A is on. So now this page will only play when self switch A is on. But we don't need these contents in here anymore because we've already played that. So another thing I would like to go over is if you want to give it a face graphic, you can obviously give it a face graphic. So we're going to say that the horse actually looks like that. You can manipulate what the window looks like. I'm sure you know how to do these certain things. But let's give our character our name. Uh, let's give our uh, our NPC quest giver a name. So how you could do that is you do a slash and an M, then you're going to open up a set of these uh, greater than less than brackets, and inside this bracket is going to be the name. So we're going to call this guy Mr. Ed. Some of you who are old enough will might get this. So this is going to be Mr. Ed, and it doesn't matter where we put this. We can put this at the very bottom right here or at the top. It'll still play in the top left corner uh, of the the conversation. So when Mr. Ed, we're going to copy that because we're going to use that in uh, multiple uh, multiple times in all the conversation. So to copy, you can now, luckily, they updated MV. If you've updated your MV to version 1.1, you can right-click and copy now. That's great. Before, we had to highlight, press Control-C, and Control-V to, to paste. But either which way you do it, it doesn't matter. So Mr. Ed says, hello, welcome to the village. If you have some time, I could use a little help. And the next one, we're going to say, we're going to do the name again, Mr. Ed. Come back and see what quests I have to offer later on. So then we turn on a self switch A. So now it goes to this page. So now if we were to talk to him, nothing's going to happen. But let's make something happen. We can uh, have Mr. Ed say, Are you ready to take on the grandest adventure, adventure of all time? Now what we can do is give the player an option. We can say yes or no. So we're going to do a show choices, yes or no. And default uh, will be on one, cancel will be on two. You can um, put as many options, maybe, maybe. So if we say no right here on the third one, what we have to do is change this cancel to three. That way when, we hit, when, we, uh, when the player says no, it's actually backing out of the conversation. So we'll, we'll keep that maybe in there. So now we've got three options. The player can say yes, maybe, or no. When the player says yes, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the switch trigger. So this is saying, 
he's accepted the quest. So what we're going to do is we're going to control a switch. Now you notice we're not using a self switch in this case because the self switch will only apply to this event. But if we use a uh, regular switch, it's actually a global switch that can be used to trigger other events. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, 181 here. It doesn't matter what number you pick. Just remember that reference. We're going to call this one Mr. Ed's Quest Line. We'll actually give it a number. Quest Line 1. Now you could use a variable to do this as well, but we're going to start with switches. So when we've said yes, we're going to turn on the switch and he's going to give us some more text. He's going to say, excellent. I need to find some, oh wait, I need, and let's see, what does he need? He needs some peanut butter. I need some peanut butter. It's an emergency. We also have to say, that slash in Mr. Ed so we can see the text. It'll say Mr. Ed up here in the top left, not down here. He'll also tell us, I think there is a merchant just south of here. Okay, so once we've said that, we're gonna uh, turn on this, this switch. If we say maybe, he'll tell us Come back when you're ready. And when you say no, he's going to say, well, that's rude. Since he's a quest giver and he wants you to accept his quest. Okay, so once we've accepted the quest, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the page. We're going to paste it again. Now we're on the third page. We're basically going to delete all that. Instead of self switch A, we're going to select global switch and we're going to say Mr. Ed's quest line one. So he's going to be on this page now and he's going to say, have you found the peanut butter yet? He's going to show the player choices. Yes or no. Now, when he says, when the player says yes, we need to double check to make sure he's actually found it. So what we're going to do is make a conditional statement. But before we can do that, we need to actually make the peanut butter item. So let's go make, not the plugin manager, the database. Let's go into our items and make our quest item. We're going to call it the peanut butter or just peanut butter. Give it an icon. Sorry about that. And it's going to look like that. That's peanut butter. Sure it is. Okay. This is going to be quest item. We're going to let the player know if they found this item that this is a quest item for Mr. Ed. <clears throat> it's not going to be consumable otherwise the player is going to be able to eat it and then won't be there for Mr. Ed. So it's not going to be um, it's never going to the occasion will be never because we're not going to let the player actually select and use the item. The scope it doesn't need any scope. We don't even have to change that but I just go with none when I go with the never occasion. Okay, we've got our quest item. Now what we need to do is go to our third page. When the player says yes, we're going to do a conditional branch. And this conditional branch, <coughs> excuse me. This conditional branch is going to see if the player actor has an item. So what we're going to do is go to tab 4. We're going to go to item and we're going to select that peanut butter item. And then we're going to select create an else branch cuz he can he can either have it or he can't have it. So if the player has it, then what we're going to do is change items and we're going to take away that peanut butter because we're giving it to Mr. Ed and Mr. Ed is going to eat that peanut butter. Mr. Ed is also going to... Uh, since we copied and pasted, we got to do this again. Wow, thanks. You're the best. Nom, 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 nom. So he eats the peanut butter. He's super happy. And he also gives you 10,000 million bajillion gold because, you know, it's a hard quest and you deserve some gold for it. So when you say uh, yes, but you don't have any peanut butter, this is what's going to be right here. Mr. Ed is basically going to tell us. I don't see any peanut butter. Unless you expect me to eat 
your arm, please go find the peanut butter. He's not yelling at us, though. He's just going to say that. Okay, and then nothing's going to happen. Um, so the else handler will still be there. But what we need to do to activate uh, the fact that we finish this, we're going to also do another switch right here. So we could either make a global uh, switch or we can make a self switch. But since we're not going to need another global switch for anything, we're going to do a self switch. So here we're going to insert self switch B. Control self switch B on. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy page. We're going to paste that page. We're going to turn off this because all we need is self switch B for this fourth page. We're going to delete all this contents. This is where Mr. Ed just tells us. Thanks for the peanut butter. Check back later for more quests. Awesome. This is where the, the, the quest is going to be completed. So how the event pages work is it will always go from the highest number to the lowest number. So when you first run this event, it's going to check. <clears throat> can, we, can we run event page 4? Well, at the beginning, self switch B isn't on, so it's not going to let us run this page four. So then it's going to go to the next page. It's going to say, can we run page three? Well, at the beginning, Mr. Ed's quest line hasn't been started, so it's not going to run this page. It's not going to, so it's going to go to number two. Can we run page two? Well, at the beginning, self switch A isn't on, so it's not going to let us run this page either. So it's going to go all the way to the beginning. So the first thing that's going to happen is going to show you this text, turn on this one. <clears throat> next time you talk to him, it's going to run this. And if you uh, tell him maybe, it's still going to be on page two. Why? Because we haven't turned on a control switch uh, one yet. So it'll still be on page two if you tell him maybe. If you tell him no, it'll still be on page two. When you tell him yes, then you've accepted the quest. But we still need to find a way to get the item. Okay? So after we've turned on this uh, quest line, he's going to be on this page waiting for you to bring back the peanut butter. So you're going to say, have you found it yet? And when you say yes, he's going to check to see if you have it. And if you do have it, he's going to take it and he's going to give you gold. And he's going to eat the peanut butter and then it's going to turn on self, self switch B. If you tell him, yeah, and you don't have it, well, he's going to say he doesn't see it, but we're not turning on self switch B yet. So it's going to stay on page three until you come back with the peanut butter. So it won't go past it if you don't have it. But once we do turn it in, self switch B goes on, boom. Now we're here. He's going to say, thanks for the peanut butter. Come back later and check, uh, check for more quests. So every point after this, after you've completed the quest, he'll just tell you thanks because you've completed the quest. Now what we need to do is make a merchant here. So we'll do a new NPC. Here we go. This guy is... Um, he's rocking. This guy is rocking. And he's going to be a merchant. So we're going to give him a name. His name is Merchant Dude. Hey, I've got... Some peanut butter for sale. Want some? Then we're going to show the player a choice, yes or no. If he says yes, what we're going to do is we're going to do input shop processing. So we're going to go to uh, scene control on tab three, shop processing. And right in here, we're going to put our peanut butter. And we can specify the price in the database. For right now, we're going to leave it to zero. Um, you could change this price, or you could make it a battle. We'll do that too. So when you say yes, he's going to open it up the shop. And if you say no, he's going to say, okay, come back later, or, or thanks for stopping by. Name, Merchant Dude. Thanks for stopping by. Matter of fact, he's going to say that even when you open up the shop he's gonna say that each time that's all he really does though because he doesn't need any any actually if we want the shopkeeper to only be here once the quest is started what we can do is turn on this gold we can do a condition so that this guy won't be here until this switch is on so this merchant guy maybe we can get it on the same screen he won't be here until we've started the quest so let's put right click on the map set our starting position set the player on any tile Let's save the game and see how it goes. Oh, okay. Well, what we've done here is set the player as transparent. Sorry about that. Quick fix. Oh. 
Okay, you see how there's no merchant dude right here. He's not there yet because we haven't turned on that switch yet. So we can act, talk to this guy. Welcome to the village. If you have some time, I can use a little help. Come back and see what quests I have to offer later on. So we've, we've talked to him. Now if we talk to him again, are you ready to take on the grandest adventure of all time? Uh, maybe? Oh, we'll come back when you're ready because we didn't turn on that switch yet. So it's still on that page. Tell him yes. Excellent. You need some peanut butter. It's an emergency. There's a merchant just south of here. So we, now the merchant's appeared. We talked to him. We got some peanut butter. You want some? Yeah, I'll take some peanut butter. We bought some peanut butter. Thanks for stopping by. Now we go back to him. Have you found the peanut butter yet? No, we haven't found it. Well, we still actually have it because we told him no, we didn't give it to him. But we can tell him yeah because we actually have it. Wow, you're the best. Nom, 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 nom. So he eats the peanut butter. We talk to him again. He says, thanks for the peanut butter. Check back later for more quests. But that's it. He's done with this quest line. And that's basically it. What you could do is have a battle. Let's do one more quick event. So if you don't want to involve a shopkeeper, you can have a monster or something come on where's the monsters here we go monsters okay that guy's fine we'll do a direction fix so it doesn't look all funny and uh, basically this is going to do battle processing so scene control battle processing it's going to start a battle with something easy we'll say a couple bats and then and then underneath that what we're going to do is uh oh here's what we can also do you can either have the item drop right here by going change <coughs> excuse me change items and put the peanut butter right here then after you beat him, you get the peanut butter. But alternatively, what you can do is go to the bats in the enemies tab. Right here. And we can select what kind of drops he's going to have. So we can go to items. We can go down to peanut butter. And boom. Now he's got a 100% chance to drop peanut butter when the bat dies. So we can save that. Now let's check this out again. If we want this to appear when uh, only we, we've started the quest, all we'd have to do is go to the conditions and set the Mr. Ed's quest line 1 be on. And then this will only be there if that switch is on. Now he's not there. But if we accept Mr. Ed's quest, yeah. You notice he's appeared, just like the merchant. So this time, we've got to kill a couple bats to get the drop. No problem. Sound cypher speed script. Love it. We got two peanut butters. Why? Well, there's two bats, and both bats have a 100% chance to drop it. Guaranteed. So we've got two peanut butters. Talk to him. We found the peanut butter. Yeah, here you go. Have some peanut butter. We're the best. Well, you know what? What we did wrong here, now we have three peanut butters. So let's double check this. What we've done here is instead of removing an item, we're actually awarding an item. So if we have the peanut butter, we decrease. And that'll get rid of it instead of adding another one. So that's basically it. Hopefully you guys liked this tutorial. Basic fundamentals, um, how to do a quest line. This is sort of like, you know, first thing you should learn how to do, basic switches. I might do another t episode of this on how to do a quest line that progresses, uh, that gets, it's a prog progressive quest line. Oh my god, guys, words are hard, okay? So maybe next time in the next episode we'll do like variable manipulation and how to do um, kill 10 bats, kill 10 rats type thing. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next tutorial.